welcome back to Astrology, Angels, and More. Tonight, we have a very interesting show all about love. Before we get to that, I would like to talk to you about the fact that we are in Aquarius right now. And on previous shows, I've discussed the fact that we are now in the age of Aquarius, which is a really awesome thing that we've been waiting for for a very, very long time, a couple of thousand years. But anyway, uh, first of all, I, I'm going to go into more information about that. But I wanted to wish Aquarius a happy, happy birthday. Aquarius... Uh, is the 11th sign of the zodiac with the planet Uranus, which represents major change and inventions, um, wonderful innovations as its ruler. The bright light color of electric blue is associated with the sign of Aquarius. That electric blue is your power color, Aquarians. Uh, Aquarians are very truthful. Uh, they can be a little bit radical, uh, aloof, intuitive, highly intuitive. They're able to see into the future. Um, and they're natural-born leaders in many ways, and they look at the bigger picture. Now, um, we are currently dealing with Mercury retrograde that we'll be dealing with through February 20th. And with that in the mix of an Aquarian stellium that I'm going to be talking about that we're going to be experiencing this month uh, in February 2020, it's a wonderful time of preparation, such as starting a new healthy weight uh, release program or exercise regimen or just purging all the clutter you have around. Uh, perfect time to start strong new beginnings. On February the 11th, we'll be experiencing the uh, wonderful Aquarian New Moon, which is part of an extremely powerful aquarium, aquar Aquarius stellium of six planets. There's going to be six planets lined up in Aquarius, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, plus even the asteroid, palace. This stellium will be highlighting strong principles and opinions, especially regarding social issues, whether it be on a global scale or a small circle within the family or with friends. This stellium of planets can represent a string of events that happen very close together or a team of people linked together with great forethought. Aquarius is the one who is always looking forward, looking forward. The emphasis, though, is on communication and meeting in the middle. And we really need that now. Now that Saturn has finally moved away from the orb of Pluto, a solution may actually occur. Don't expect the solution to come too quickly, though, but it definitely will occur. What we decide that we want during this Aquarius new moon will be what we can bring to fruition at the time of the Virgo full brilliant moon on February 27th. So you have all this month to be working on new ideas, new things that you want to bring into your life, a new way even of looking at things, new programs, new adventures. However, Mars and Taurus will be trining the full moon along with Uranus and Taurus, the planet of great and sudden change for us as individuals and the world. And also, at the time of having Mars uh, in Taurus, you have to be careful of your temper. Uh, since Mercury is moving away from Saturn, now is the time to let go of the doubt, fear, pessimism, and embrace faith, hope, and optimism. 
This is no longer the time to rest on your laurels. This is the time for change, for great change. And to quote Albert Einstein, outer changes always begin with an inner change of attitude. And now, later on this month, the sun will be moving into Pisces. And Pisces is the 12th and final sign of the zodiac with Neptune as its ruler. Pisces gemstones, power stones, are turquoise, sugar light, and covalite. The color of turquoise is associated with the sign of Pisces. Pisceans are highly intuitive spiritual individuals. Many possess the gift of prophetic dreaming. They're also dreamy, imaginative, uh, creative, sensitive, and lovers of art and poetry. Pisceans make great, wonderful, sensitive lovers. And now, what we're going to be talking about tonight is all about love, all about love, all the different aspects of love. And this is our Valentine show, and I wish everyone a very happy Valentine's Day. And what a better time to be able to learn to love yourself and others. So I have a very special guest here tonight to discuss all this, and that is Thomas Knight's Templar. Hi, Tommy. How you doing? Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. So glad you could do this show with me. Well, it's Valentine's Day week. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Everything counts for double when you're in love. Yes, that's true. That's true. Isn't that beautiful what you just said? Yeah, well. That's beautiful. Tis the season. Yes, tis the season. Tis the season, and that's yes. the reason for the season. Yes. Yes. Oh, now that I got my whimsical stuff out of the way. Okay. 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 Well, you have some very uh, pertinent information in reference to how the angels also can help us with love, right? That's true. That's very true. When, the, well, the archangel Shamuel, who's going to be showcased, he's right here on the wall behind us. Mm. All right. He uh, is the archangel of love. He's also the archangel of, you know, of goodwill and promoting that kind of love for one another. Uh, the things I would tell you is that with the you know things that have been going on, it's time that we get back into love and get back to realizing you know, God's plan for us, and that was mm -hmm. to be loving beings here on earth. Okay, That's what we were meant to do. That's what we were meant to be, is to be loving beings and, and, and be considerate of one another and to love that person, you know? I start off a lot of times my day and I tell people who I talk to, you know, that I love them because they're in my circle of, of people I deal with. And, I, and you need to tell them because you don't know if today's the last day you're here. It's a good point. You don't know that, okay? And one thing that Archangel Chamuel, he would want you to learn how to unconditionally love, regardless of what a person thinks, believes, or acts, or whatever it is. You have to love that person because that's another piece of God, just like you are. You know, Archangel Samuel stands for these things. He's the archangel you turn to, you know, uh, for love matters. You know, there's several other ones that, you know. Well, that, all the angels can help they, they, us. Well, they're all interchangeable. Exactly. They, they, I mean, Michael you and I talk this. about that all the time. Yes, yes, right? yes. Right? You know. But Archangel Shamuel, yes, is the angel of love, of love. and joy and peace mm -hmm. and music. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Romantic love, you know, and all. It's all kinds of love. Unconditional love. Listen, I, we, we've said it a thousand times on both our shows. If you don't love yourself, you'll find it impossible to love anyone else. That's okay? the truth. Because you use yourself as a barometer as to how you should feel about someone. Mm -hmm. And that is wrong. You have to use God's barometer. And that is unconditional love. Why do you think the animals in this world are sacred in his view? Because they love you unconditionally. Period to the end. And if we don't get back to that as a world, never mind as a society, never mind as uh, highly astute, educated people, 
we don't get back to the basics of caring about one another, about loving one another, about even if you have total opposite polar ideas, somewhere in the middle you must mm -hmm. meet. You must meet. And that's what Archangel Chamuel does. He sanctions the love that should be there between you. This is a statue of uh, Archangel Shamuel. Brian, you coming on that, please? Oh, okay. Uh, this is Archangel Shamuel, the angel of love that Tommy's talking about. And there's also a picture behind us, Shamuel. And um, Shamuel also is the one who's in charge of the heavenly choirs. He right. loves singing. Loves music, singing. Yeah, loves singing. Singing praises unto the Lord. Yes, amen. How many times in the amen. Bible do you see that? Singing praises unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay? Even in your Psalms, rejoice, sing, dance unto your God, unto your Lord. All right? That's where God feels your love for him. And Archangel Shamuel is the representation here on earth of God's love. All right, he'll come to you in an instance. All you have to do is accept your angels. That's all you need to do. And you just say, I need you now. I, and that's another it's thing. It's as simple as that, to ask them to come in. Whatever you ask them, so long as it doesn't um, compromise somebody's free will. Right. Okay. So long as it doesn't put you first, the other person is first. Everything you want for yourself you have to ask that for the other people, okay? You cannot circumvent their free will, and the angels won't do that for you. Never. Okay, they will not do that for you. They won't do it for you, and you really shouldn't do that because that could really come back. Well, that leads into the other side. Yes, it does. And that yes, draws, darkness. That, yeah, what they'll do to you is they'll draw false entities parading as the angels. Right, right. And you don't want to get into that. Right, and they can. Well, let's just, could we just for a moment talk about that? Sure. Because that's something that's very real that a lot of people are unaware of. Imposters. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you yourself, I know we've had lots of conversations about this. Yes, that we have. there's, you know, many times people will think that they're working with an angel. <laughs> and they're not. Especially mm -hmm. Archangel Michael. Archangel. Who's right there in front of you? Because right. Archangel Michael is uh, the angel of strength and power, That's and right. right. And a lot of times, what people want is they want power over someone else, right? Yes. And you know, so. But anyway, well, that, that, see, that's why a lot of people get into things where they think that they're going to develop a special power, right? That they could use to. And better, you know, better themselves and control others. And control others. You're not supposed to do if that. If you go to anybody who will. gives you any kind of reading like that, oh my goodness, run for the hills. Oh my goodness, run for the hills oh my and goodness. bathe in kosher salt to get that negative yeah. stuff off you. Like especially in reference to like a spell that will draw your lover oh, to yeah, you yeah, 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 and yeah. things like that. I mean, there's things that you can do in order to allow love into your heart. That's right. Okay? And have your heart chakra open mm -hmm. and sending that love energy out. But that doesn't mean that, that you you're to trying to it. control no. somebody else no. and drawing them to you because no. then you're interfering with free will. Because how many times, and you've done many readings, and how many times has somebody come to you and said to you, goes, you know, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck. Right. Okay, or they'll say to you, goes, why do I keep on meeting the same kind of guy? Well, you're not going to meet the right guy in a bar. Because what's he out for? Okay, or what's she out for? You know? Ask God, ask Archangel Shamuel, and there's a few others that work with Shamuel. Right. You know, Rag I think it's Raguel. I can't say that word. Raguel. Raguel, that's Raguel it. helps yeah. with relationships. Yes, yes. Yes. Like and, if you're and having even, a problem and in even a relationship. Raphael does uh, put things together. He's a matchmaker. Uh, well, yeah, because, yeah. you know, Raphael rules the heart chakra. He's the healer of the, the heart. He's the healer, yeah. and he also he mm -hmm. works a lot with the heart chakra. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. The combination of Raphael and Archangel Shamuel is wonderful. What I, what I tell people, when, they, when they're on the hunt, if they're on the hunt for a relationship, <laughs> I will tell you this much. Yeah. The more you chase it, 
the more it will elude you. Okay? That's the because truth. you're chasing what you always chase, the thing that hurts you the most. When you feel it in here, how many times have you felt it? Your heartbreak. You better believe that that's where the love is. Okay, that's where God and the angels live, in your heart. That's how God knows everything you do, because he knows your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Archangel Shamuel, you could say to him, because say to somebody you like this trait about this young man or woman, and that trait about that one, you say, I want one of somebody for me who has this, has that, has this, and I won't settle for anything less, only better. And then see yourself, and see feel yourself, right. yourself, see yourself with feel yourself that person, that. feeling the love exchange. Every day, every day. That's called concentrated thought, concentrated prayer. Mm -hmm. When you direct your prayer to one goal, and that would be love, mm -hmm. you become a magnet and draw love. Every morning, say, you look yourself in the mirror, I am God's son, I'm God's daughter, okay? And I deserve all the good things in this life. Send me a companion, a twin flame. Twin flame. Couldn't get it out today. I know. A Why does this stick sometimes? I don't know. <laughs> a, 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 a twin flame. I said it. That we're going okay. to be talking and about that. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you are lucky enough in this life to actually run into your twin flame and, and have that loving relationship, mm. that is a bond. That is a bond above the love of this world. It's a bond of heavenly matters. Yes, that's the truth. Okay? It is a bond of monumental love that you can't even comprehend. It doesn't happen in every lifetime. No, it don't. No, it you don't. don't get to experience that in every lifetime. And I know you and I um, maybe differ on a couple of things in reference to the twin flame. What? We, we differ? <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe. Hey, listen, I was it's on that hard, side of the coin on that to topic. Believe, it's hard to believe. But, you know, there's ways to recognize. I, I have a few notes here that I brought because I knew we were... Now you brought up the twin flame, so I was going to... Okay. See what so, you started? You so, told me about yeah, it. Yeah, I know, I know, but I... Okay, so listen. Um, how do you know when you meet your twin flame, right? How do you know? Well, She set thing, your pants on fire? Dear, no. No, no. Well, that is an extreme experience because okay. it's usually an extreme experience. Look, um, the five signs, okay, to know that you've met your twin flame. Okay. Recognition at first sight. Have you ever met anybody? Yes. And immediately, absolutely, immediately. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the love at first sight kind know, of thing. I know. Yeah. Okay. So, and at first, it's a feeling that you get with the person, mm -hmm. and then when you look in their eyes. You can actually that see. That happens for me. It's the eyes. It's the eyes. It's the eyes, the window to the soul. Yeah, well, that, not only the window to the soul, but for me, if there's something in the eyes, that's what immediately draws me. Yeah, it's all about okay. the eyes. Okay, everything else could be fine, but that draws me, the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, me too. I know good people just by their eyes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So not that? even about, like, finding love or uh, know to, knowing whether you've met your twin no, flame. No, I'm not finding love. Just, I'm married. I'm not going to have my wife kill okay, me tonight. Okay, yeah, I'm not I'm talking sleeping. about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, not ta we're talking to the audience. Yes. Okay. But not just about finding love and, uh, you know, like that, but to know if someone is a good person. Absolutely. You know, you go by your gut instinct, but you also, when you look in their eyes, mm -hmm. tells everything. That's it. It really, really does. But also another sign that you've met your twin flame is that there's uh, extreme and inexplicable emotions, okay? Like they're overwhelming, like that emotions that you have never felt around anyone else. You, be, you, you agree you're with me? You're just happy around them. You're just, you, you're just happy to share the same space, the same air with them because it is that intense vibe of love. Yeah, and, and you don't want to leave them. No, no, you know, no, you, no. Time will just go yeah. by so quickly, you, you and you don't want to leave You find it so them. hard to want to get out of that person's company, and that person finds it so hard to get out of yours. That's true. However, yeah. there's something else here in reference to a twin flame, <laughs> okay? She says, Those trouble now. Here we go. What, go what, what? I don't know. Okay, say Okay, it. here we go. And don't it's say retrograde. Please don't it's say that. It's the truth. 
It's a, oh, Mercury. I was very light about Mercury retrograde. I'm glad you were. You know I hate that. I know you do. But okay. I had to say, why is it always that you happen to be on this show or I happen to be on your show when Mercury is retrograde and we're talking about it? Every time. It's just not every time, but a lot of the a times. A lot of times. Anyway. But uh, <laughs> the extreme emotions can also work the other way. Yeah. Because, yeah, seriously, because and that's what you have to notice, like about about yourself, mm-hmm. because you can strongly, uh, you can be strongly triggered just by their, their like p- even yes. small actions that can create inside of you a feeling of jealousy or sadness or anger. Because you've like, probably known this person. You. You've probably known this person in in, in past lives. Of I mean, course. you know the story for me with with certain things. You know, and um, as far as that's concerned, past lives ago. And you share that. So it's an instantaneous bond if you see each other again. Mm-hmm. All right. Remember one thing is that say you realize that's your twin flame. You see somebody who you know, you don't know, and you want to get to know. But remember, if you are too intense and that person doesn't realize that they are a twin flame of yours, okay, right. you're going to push it away. So you have That's to you true. have to stay within the boundaries and the guidelines. Yeah. All right. If you're going to be one of these stalkers. Yeah, because what it, <laughs> well, you never work. want to be a stalker. No. Okay, that's going over the line. Is but it? what we're yes, it I'm is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You, yes, it is. However, it's absolutely true because it creates intense emotion it when does. you come in it contact does. again from because maybe you haven't seen them in a hundred lifetimes and then you connect again, you reconnect, and it's like. You know, so all these intense emotions, but don't blame that person for those emotions. And I'm going to tell you why. I I wouldn't blame them. Well, lots of times a person, they can get very jealous. They can get very upset that they're not getting the response they wanted to because that person doesn't know yet. Exactly. They just know that they like you. Exactly. But you see, the twin flame comes into our life because it's helping Mm -hmm. us evolve. Yes. Seriously, yes. It, it, I shouldn't say that he or she, um, but because gets to my next point, when you know that you have been in a relationship mm-hmm. with your twin flame, and it isn't always happily ever after, no, you know, no. but um, it's rapid up leveling. Through the ascension process. It's euphoric is what it is. Yeah. Well, this encounter places your personal development on turbo boost. So it's coupled with usually uh, major life changes like moving Mm -hmm. to a different city or a career change or ending relationships. Okay. That we're keeping you small or keeping you in this 3D. You know what I'm saying, Tommy? Yes. Yes. And then the other thing is past life memories. Okay. Um, many past lifetimes together, as we were just talking about before, Mm -hmm. and some may have felt like scars on your soul. Remembering past lives together through past life regression Mm -hmm. can clear this karma. And you know, I do a lot of past life regression. And what happens is once you view that relationship, Mm -hmm. You can because you know so so many times like what you were saying is the other person might not realize they don't realize that they're it. the and, twin and, fl- flame that, and but you're that's so why, hurt. That's why you have to be at that point. You have to be balanced. Your, your your emotions have got to be balanced because if your emotions are way off the chart, you're going to push it away, and that there is just God's way of protecting the other person. You know from your in, intenseness. Right. You know, I've seen this. I mean, how many times when you were, just say, a kid growing up or in high school, all right, and you're in school and in uh, in your in your uh, math class, there was that breathtaking one comes in, you hear the music going, and everything, <laughs> and you're over there, you're daydreaming like this. You're probably daydreaming like that <sighs> about you and him or you and her, okay. And when you're doing that daydream, a lot of times there's past relationship okay and a lot of that daydreaming is not daydreaming it's actually reliving what you it's remembering know. remembering okay only thing that because your memories are erased oh sorry about that because your memories are erased when you come in to start your new journey to mm-hmm. evolve okay you'll, you'll you'll have those i hate to use the word but them deja vu moments mm-hmm. okay those are not deja vus. Those, those are what I call and what 
Neville Goddard calls and what, uh, what's his name, Wayne Dyer and all the rest of them, synchronicities. That's right. There's no such thing as coincidences. Coincidences are for those that are not evolving, the ones that are settled in the 3D world, and that's it. Yeah, Five there senses. is no such thing as coincidence. No, there's no coincidence. Everything is synchronistic. You ask for something and it shows up in your life, you better thank those angels because they're working on your side. You always have to thank your angels. Always thank. Always. Okay. People a, ask and then they forget about yeah. being grateful. <laughs> well, that's it. It's so important. They get what they, they get what they want yeah. and then they go about their three D life. Yeah, but they don't realize it. But and then, and then when they well, lose, and then and do. then when they lose it, they want to know why. You well, know? yeah. Gee, Tom, Gratitude is Gee, Tom, extremely why, 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 why important. Why did this happen to me? See, Tom, uh, you, you know, you, you think in, in sometime in this life I'm going to meet the right guy. I said, yeah, you will. Absolutely. I said, you met him already. He passed, and you gave you put your nose up to him because you're looking for Fabio, when the guy was very maybe Al Bundy, okay? But he was the guy for you. Well, what you were talking about synchronicities, actually, um, that's the other note that I had here in reference to recognizing your twin flame. Uh, tel <laughs> telepathy and seriously, like they might come into your dream state yeah. or you might go into their dream state um, when you're comparing, you know, when you're talking and mm -hmm. you just uh, know what the other person is going to say. Yes. And that's absolutely a very important sign uh, that you intuitively guess the synchronicities mm -hmm. and messages, what they're thinking and feeling. That's a very important sign to recognizing if that is your twin flame. But, you know, I mean, all twin flam, flame... All flim twin, flams. I know, you did that to me before, so now I'm doing it. Now she did But, it. yeah, see? Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, all twin flame relationships do not end badly. Sometimes you live happily ever after in That's this right. lifetime. What a twin flame is, is that there, when the universe was created by God, there was the Big Bang. And there were all these little, I know, you might not agree with me. No, 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 just, just atoms, that phrase just gets me. All you know. these little atoms were spewing around out there, all these little atoms, okay? And within each atom, there was a masculine, feminine, yin, yang. And you think that wasn't deliberately and, orchestrated and to make us split. where we were and involve us to this point? Exactly, and the atoms you know. split, and that's your twin flame. That's, that's your, your soul. father, that's your heavenly father that put together this whole thing. You want to call it a big bang? I would just call it a heavenly reunion of... Microorganisms that well, want to get together created and it. created us. Somebody created okay. it. But if you, that if, is if, how, if, if, yeah. that's our souls. Of that's course. That's the spark of our soul. That's, that was the beginning, beginning of our soul. And the reason that you're talking about twin flame is because within that atom, okay, of that little energy, micro, that, little microcosm. that tiny little thing mm -hmm. in there was the masculine and the feminine. And what happens is whenever those two conjoin again in a lifetime and they meet each other. That's right. It's instant. It is you know? instant. It's instant. It's instant. You know, you, but you, it's extremely listen, intense. There, there, were, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of people that were childhood sweethearts. Uh, you know, moved, somebody moved away or whatever it is, but they've always had that intensity about one another. And, then and like, it never and goes then, away. And then 30 years later... Right, this person uh, is widowed, or that one's divorced, or whatever it is, because they weren't with the right word, one in the first place. That's right. And they run into each other, and it's like, like God glued and, them together. And it's as though no time had passed. That's right. And Isn't not, that the it, truth? It, it, not only is that no time has passed, but the bond between them is, is just inseparable. The only one who can separate that is God. Mm -hmm. No man on earth is going to separate that. No woman on earth is going to get in between that. And I'm sure the audience can relate to the things that we're talking about here tonight, right? Yes. I'm sure that they can. This is not all about candy hearts, diamond rings, and whatever else, no, trinkets that you get. No, and no, And Hallmark cards, it's not about that, okay? Those are all nice things, and those are all nice symbols of affection, okay? It's from here. Absolutely. It's from here, okay? 
It's from here. This is where the love is in your in yourself. But I'm telling you, you have to learn to love yourself. Now, there's some people, oh, well, love myself. Ha, 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 ha. You know, they're thinking you're talking no, about something else. That's no. not true. You have to love the being that you are. You know, you, you know, people might think you're the biggest failure in life. There are no failures in this life. You are God's child. God don't make mistakes. He don't make mistakes. Okay? He filled you to complete a mission. And a mission that you signed on for. A mission that was based in love. You came into this world and became acclimatized to its ways and sometimes fall into the den of iniquity that changes things for you. That's why, more than ever, we must get back into love, regardless of what you think, or regardless of, you know, you don't want to listen to this one or that one, I don't care. If we don't get back to being a loving society, a godly society, okay? Choice is yours. Choice is yours. Well, first you have yeah, to learn Archangel, how... Yeah, Archangel, Chamuel, pull you right into this and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and work with you. It's the truth. You know it's how many the truth. angels... It's amazing. Many, you know how many Archangels... They're just waiting. My personal Archangels that I call on every single night. And I'm going to go through them. All right? I have Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Sandalfin, and Metadrin. Okay. Metadrin. Metatron. Metadrin. Probably you guys know as Metatron. Okay. Tommy. Voltron, Metatron. To pronounce Electron. Metatron. Metadron, he told me himself. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, well, he did. I, I, I believe you, but my goodness. Then I call on Ariel. And, um, yeah. Um, now you got me screwed up with it. Uh, Haniel, Jophiel, Ariel, uh, Azrael, um, Jeremiah, Zadkiel, who's my guardian god. Um, guardian Archangel. angel, yeah. yeah. Um, who else I call on? Uh, Raguel, Bar uh, Barachael. Uh, yeah, you almost forgot Barachael. Uriel, uh, Athena. I call on uh, Maximilian, who is an archangel that I have invoked, and uh, Mekesedek. These are the angels I call on every single night. And that's when I go not out all to, the when angels. I go out to, when, that's not all of them. There's a lot of them. No, there's a lot of angels. You know, and that's yeah. no disrespect for the other archangels. Brilliant. You know no. what I mean? I, I, would, I would include them all in, you know, because they're beneficial beings. And that's all you have to do. You don't even have to say their names if you can't remember their names or you can't remember exactly what they do. If you're in a situation and you need help, you just say, Angels, I need you now. And that's all you do. And mm -hmm. then they're there. And, you know, like Archangel Michael, when we were talking before, mm -hmm. Archangel Michael, any time that you're afraid or you feel fear yeah. uh, or you, you need strength, you need strength. Yeah. Listen, Michael is there when, when especially for people who fear every damn thing, including this Let's, pandemic. Okay. Yeah. Stop fearing it. Things you fear in general, you draw to you. So why would you fear it? Fear is inverted faith. Have faith in knowing that God's got this. Archangel Michael is here to provide you with the backbone, the spine, okay, the testicular fortitude that you need to move forward, okay, in confidence in who you are, a child of God. A child of God, remember that. And what you believe to be true is true. You create your own reality. That's right. That's right. By your thoughts, you create. You create negative or positive. Don't you remember when you were, like, say, um, Regents Week in high school? Boy, I hate that. I hate it. I used to get them like three in a day, two in a day, whatever it was. Okay? Regents Week. So you studied global or world history or American history, which we don't have anymore. But wow. that's a whole nother story. Okay? But you studied these things, and you were apprehensive. You studied, you studied, you studied. And then you start saying to yourself, oh, I, I know I know this material, but I know it's just going to fail. I'm going to, guess what? You, you set yourself up. You failed. Because you claimed it. Don't claim it. You are not a failure. You are a success. God made you. You are a success. It's up to you. To retard yourself. That's what it is. By your word, you create. 
So you have the strength right here in Michael. That's right. Call upon him. Okay? And it's remember. That. It's just and, that that's simple. right. And remember. Fear, which encompasses envy, jealousy, all the all the terrible all things. All those negative the feelings. Negative that feelings. Feel. Right? Fear is inverted faith. Do you remember the story in the Bible when Jesus was on the boat? He was asleep. And that boat was doing a, a titanic thing, all right? And all the apostles that were on that boat were deathly afraid they were going to die, okay? And what did Jesus say to them? Ye of little faith. Put out his hand, and he calmed the ocean, the water, right? I think it was the Sea of Galilee. He calmed the, the, mm -hmm. the waterway, it was. okay? And he convicted them of how little faith they have. Don't go through life in fear because you won't really live a good life. You'll fear everything. Don't let them poison your mind with fear. Okay? Fear is what you make of it. If you fear it, you want it. That's it. Simple as that. And in reference to, in reference to love, if a person, uh, sometimes a person starts mm -hmm. fearing love, okay. they close their heart down because they've had heartbreak, you but, know, yes, yes. and they've been disappointed in love. But also realize this, that this is also part of, seriously, your karma. It's part of your evolution for <laughs> yeah. you to go through. It isn't all good things that no, happen. It's, it's you not, have to go through no. bad things too, you know, you're pay, in order you're, to you're, evolve. You're paying a price for the things that you didn't complete in your last lifetime. That's right. It's as simple as you that. Know, it's, it's not simple, that hard. It, it, it is as simple as that. Some it's people not say, that hard. How could God create someone like uh, Hitler for art against me? Well, he was necessary at that particular time to bring the world together, okay, after that war. It was all rebuilding. You were supposed to rebuild and build and, and build good fences and keep your neighbors close and peaceful. Mm -hmm. And what do we go and do? We go and exploit it because men are fallible. God is not. Simple as that. You are a child of God. Jesus said to his disciples, didn't I tell you all gods? It's in the Bible more than once. So that's why, like what you were talking about before, loving yourself, yeah. you look in the mirror and you, and you find the nice things about yourself. You should get up in the morning. Things you like about yourself. That's and right. that's what you focus on. That's right. You know, not anything that you think is maybe a little bit of a problem that you need to adjust <laughs> or something like yeah, that. Because you know? people, people go, they're, they're God, like, they focus on that. Do you remember, of, I forgot what movie it was, but they had, a, they had a, a little mouse and they had a guy. And the mouse's name was Algernon, and he would run through this maze to get a treat. Yeah. He'd find his way through it. Yeah. This life is a maze. And guess what? You're chasing that little piece of cheese. But if you're confident that you already have that cheese, you already got it. You know, be confident That's in who you point. are. That's a good point. That's a very good Stop point. Stop chasing the, the, the golden ring. You already have the golden ring. You're a child of God. What more do you want? You think... If somebody got $10 million, all right. We're going to give him $300 more million. And we're going to give him a trillion dollars. That ain't going to make you any happier than you are right now. You're just going to have a lot of money to buy a lot of things. Yeah. Things you don't take with you when you die. Okay? But, Tommy, a lot of people, you know, are looking for someone to share their lives with. Absolutely. And so, um, but because they've had bad relationships in the past, the just, key is no. Seriously, what no, no, saying, no. I just heard. I, I, they, I really they, you know don't know what they're doing something. to me. You don't know what they're doing to me. What? What? Go ahead. As you said that, you were talking about bad relationships. <laughs> they were playing. I was looking for love in all the wrong, all, all wrong places yeah. in my head. They started playing it. And I, I you know, you, and, you, and you know who that is, all right? The wrong you, you know who that is. Who's doing that? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, so but. I have some advice here for them. Give them okay. advice. Yes, Go ahead. that's what I want to help people. So the whole thing is that um, if you've had bad relationships in the past and you don't want to get into another one, because many times this mm -hmm. is what happens. That's right. You know, we repeat the same behavior over and over and over day. and over and over and day all over, over again. again. Right? Just with a you different know, partner. You know how many people come to me like for a reading and 
they're and they're saying, I can't believe I got in a relationship with another alcoholic, or they're you on, know what I mean? They're on, or, they're, so, on, they're on the gerbil wheel. Yeah, well, that's because right. So what you can do is to heal from heartbreak and to have yourself move forward and to be able to release any of all that old stuff, those old patterns, and create new ones, okay? First thing you do, so uh, you might want to grab a piece of paper and a pencil right now or a pen that would be to, a good idea. to jot this down, right? So anyway... Uh, the first thing you would do is you would list the bad behaviors of the previous lovers that you experienced over and over again. You know, because usually, like you were saying, yeah. it's Groundhog's Day <laughs> over it and over and over, but it's heartbreaking, you know, for people. So, and then, number two, how does this behavior make you feel? Mm -hmm. So, if you notice a trait that's repeated in your relationships. That's right. And then you have to look within yourself and say, how was that really making me feel? And just write it down. You know, it's very keep important. It's, it's, like it's no big deal to keep a journal. Right, that's no true. No big deal to keep a journal. Because you keep a journal, at least you can follow your experiences down, which led you to the wrong relationship and led you to the second wrong relationship or the third or 50th. Okay, well, it's up usually, to you. Usually, if you've you know, had if you put out that kind of energy that draws a negative person, you want to change it. You want to change your energy. You want to change it. You want to raise so, your vibration. You want to do something. So, Jesus, start yoga or something, but so, get on the but, path. So this is the third thing that you would ask yourself, because these are questions you ask yourself. Okay, what is the reason I allow this behavior to continue, <laughs> and do I benefit in some way? Because lots of times that ends up yes. Yes, lots of times people are in a bad relationship and in some way they're benefiting. I'm serious. Listen. Maybe they're getting you, attention. If you have two people because that, everybody's saying, oh, if, poor listen, heart. If you got heart. if you got two people getting together and they've been bounced around more than a handball on a handball court in relationships and they find each other and they're two of a kind. You know, rebounders, rebounders, rebounders. And the one thing, guys, please, and girls too, <laughs> stop looking for people who look exactly of the one you lost before. Oh, my stop God. Doing that. that is such a good point. Okay, stop doing oh that. Oh, my. Absolutely wonderful point you've made there. That is you know why it's a good point? Because I did you, that. I love that. I ain't doing to ever do that again. Oh, you did that? A long time ago. Oh. A long time ago. Oh. You've been married for a long time, so I'm uh, sure. But Mark, it was it was, it was prior to that. Yeah, I know. I'm sure it was. Don't do okay. that. So, and anyway, and then here, there's only five questions that you're asking yourself. So here's the fourth question: What do I believe about myself that allows me to continue accepting this behavior? <laughs> Right? I mean, yeah, but this is like, these questions self -esteem, seem simple. Self I'm here to say self-esteem. But self if you have to really go in deep in yourself and really look at that it, and be honest it's, it's, about it with it, yourself. It, it, it's self-esteem, but you just said that it's just, that's what they're saying. They're just beating me with it. Okay. So, and then number five, when did this belief about yourself start? Um, what was happening around that time that created it. Mm -hmm. So whether it created self lack of yeah. self-esteem. Self-esteem is, low self-esteem is, is the major cause here most of the time. I agree with that. I, I tend what? to agree with that. For you, but, for you ladies, you know, I've seen this a lot of times well, in people that I, I, I know and are in relationships and they talk to me about certain things. And the one thing that just seems to be the main point that stays out, okay, is that these people don't realize that they draw these kind of people because they haven't changed themselves. That's the point. <laughs> they haven't changed themselves. How can, the how, can you get you what you, how can you get what you want? You know, how can you get what you want if you're going to go in with doubt? The self-doubt, the low self-esteem... You shouldn't have any low self-esteem. You're a child of God. Well, yeah, but yeah, but Tommy, you have to look at what created that what created self -esteem. It is the behavior constant... could have been from when you were a child. Okay. Well, no, yeah. now you get now you get deep. Uh, yeah, now you get yeah, you get hypnosis deep. Well, yeah, because this is really what creates the patterns that then we have as adults with other people. 
Hmm. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's the whole point. So that you can really, you ask yourself those five questions, yeah. then you really get down to the root because that last question, as I said, what was happening around that time? Well, around that time. Yeah. But, but you know what? You, when you, you first experience that. When you first start dating, whenever that is, 15, 16, 13, who knows? Today it could be anything. Oh, please. But <laughs> when you first start dating, what do you really know about being uh, caring to another person? All you know is that you have her or you have him, and anybody comes near him, you're going to bite their head off. All right? Mm. That, that's kitty stuff. Okay? But if that pattern continues into your adult life, then you become fixated on the failure. Yeah. And you're That's going to draw problem. more. That is a problem. So you need to change the behavior. That's right. I, I tell you, if you have that kind of problem, and if you still can't get past even in, you know, calling your, upon your angels because you're a self-doubter, mm -hmm. okay, when you connect with your angels, you from that point on will self stop being self-destructive. Instead of saying things, you look at yourself in the morning, you get up, I am God's magnificent in me. I am is the key word. That, I am is the name. You can you tell them. That's right. It's the name of God. That's right. Anytime you say I am I anything. I am that I am that I am. That's right. Anytime you say anything like I am so sick of this or I am so tired, guess what? The great I am is God. You're calling God's name to make you tired. Mm -hmm. You're calling God's name to make you a failure. Mm -hmm. And he will do that. This is true. Because you're using his name. That's taking his name in vain. Stop doing that. Get a little book and write how many times you say I am or something negative. They don't want you. To, the angels are here to help you get past that. Why wouldn't you call on them? It's their why, job. Why would you call them? <laughs> they, they, tell them, tell them how, how countless the angels are. I mean, how many there are. Zillions. There are so many angels that the grains, of, the grains of sand on the beach don't even cover. They're zillions, and they are so powerful. But, you know, a lot of people realize that nowadays especially, I think. You know, yeah, yeah. they're starting to, they're yeah, starting to come around People are starting to, to come into spirituality now. Oh, my goodness, More yes. and more. Well, because of the they, evolution they, process. Well, the evolution process, we have changed. We have come into the, the female energy of Aquarius. And we're in the I age like, of Aquarius, yes. I just said that. Yes, you anyway, did. And, and the stellium of Aquarius is coming up on the 11th. And what's today? The Fourth, right? The today's the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Today's the fourth. So in another so week, we're going to have that When all them ducks are in the row, what was this? Uh, you said uh, you mentioned uh, hmm? an asteroid is in it. Yeah. What asteroid is that? Pallas. Pallas. Okay. P a l l a s. Pallas. Does, does that corrupt the astrological forecast because it's mm. there? No. See, uh, I'm a Greek astrologer. I'm not Greek, but I practice Greek astrology. Okay, there's different kinds. You're going of... for Slovakia after this? Okay. <laughs> then there's Hindu astrology. But um, basically, I concentrate on the planets because that's really the material energy that you're mm -hmm. talking about, big energy. Um, but the asteroids make uh, appearances. Do you think that, that they tweak? But they're, sm they're tweak. Tweak is the word. They tweak the aspects of the, that. What was I, I was talking to my son yesterday about that, and he used that word, tweak, when I was talking about the asteroid palace. Very gifted men, man. My goodness. Very gifted. My Very goodness. Very good looking, too. Have you seen him on the show? <laughs> Daniel. Yes, Daniel Irizarry. I had a couple but of no, people that say that to me. Well, oh, he's so handsome. I yeah, said, I said. Do you think Mary would have an ugly child? I was just kidding. Oh, really? People yeah, have said yeah, that a couple to people you. Have said oh, that is, to me. Yeah, some of my clients who have seen him on the show and they come back and tell me that. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a good-looking guy. The the thing is, though, that um, yeah, he said the same thing. He used that same word as you, and I said, "Oh my goodness, that is a wonderful way of describing it." Because yes, it tweaks the energy. Excellent. I love that. Okay, I'm going to keep that. Okay, okay. it's yours. I'm going to keep that. But, um, yeah, because that's some heavy-duty energy, and it's the new moon. And the new moon is all new beginnings. All new, especially, is, it's, isn't it? It's the first new moon of the Aquarian. Yes. Okay, so that's going to be interesting. If you have your stones and your gems yeah. and your bracelets and anything else that gathers energy, and you want to cleanse it, put it in the backyard. 
Put it in your window. Get that moon energy in there. Even if it's cloudy, you can't see the moon. It's still going to receive the energy. That's right. Well, the new moon you can't see, but the full moon you can. But here's some rose quartz, okay? This is a really nice love stone. Yes, it is. You know, rose quartz. Say it's a pink, nice little stone. If you'd like to draw love to you, now that doesn't mean that you're creating a spell mm -hmm. and you're fixated on one particular person. No. Um, you're just drawing love to you with the energy of love from the rose quartz. You can wear rose quartz around your neck and allow it to hit your heart chakra yes. on a long enough chain. Yes. Activates the heart chakra. Very, very nice. I saw that. I meant to tell you. I saw that, but I just didn't like the way it was fitted. You know? I, I, was, I was looking at how it was fastened, and it was done, like, really from some other country, maybe. You did maybe. see that. Yeah, I did see it. And I said, I said no, it's not, that's not going to last... You know, if I see one, I will get it for you. Okay. <laughs> but it's going to be yeah. better than that. I love rose quartz. You know, on one of the shows um, that we did, it, I had my big rose quartz from my office. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Brian yeah. saw that rose quartz when he came to the office. Mm -hmm. uh, really big hunk of it. But we have some little ones here right now. And like you, even if you carry one in your, in your pocket... That's right. You know, and you breathe your prayer into that stone of bringing love into your life, mm -hmm. you know? Then you energize recognize that stone. It, recognize it for what it is. It's, it's the gemstone of, of love. And, you know... It's Shamuel's yeah. color. It is, see? Pink. Pink! <laughs> okay? Pink is the color of love. Everybody thinks that red is the color of love. Well, red is the love... Of, uh, that's passion. That's passion. Red is the fiery passion. Mm -hmm. Okay. But pink is the color of love. Color, that is pink, very, yeah, very pink true. is the color of love. Yeah, yeah. but sugar light also sugar is light, yeah. wonderful. I haven't been able to find that. <laughs> I was looking for that. Did you give me really? one? Sugar light? I thought you gave me one. No. Oh, you I gave me. Oh, you gave me. Uh, you gave me uh, the one I asked you about the uh, Rhoda, the garnet. Yeah. Has, I can't think of the name. I either. can't think of the name either. The yeah. one that I looked for for yeah. a very long time. <laughs> Okay. We're getting so, short on time, you know. Huh? We're getting short on time. This hour I flies know, when we I do. I know. Well, can I just say something here? Go ahead. A nice little little exercise. Um, so if you want to do this right now, okay, just get comfortable and just sit comfortably uh, with your feet flat on the ground. Palms up. Yes, palms up. Very nice to bring that energy into That's right. you. Accept it. And then as you bring your energy in, mm -hmm. then you can take your hands and place them both on your, right heart. On your heart. Okay. Just come back on your heart. Yeah. Like so. And and take three deep breaths, cleansing breaths, in through the nose, out, through, out the through the mouth. Out through the mouth, slowly. Three of them. Again, in through your nose. And out through the mouth. And out through the mouth. Remember, you're breathing in God's prana. That's yes, his energy, are. and you're releasing everything negative. All those past failures and past relationships, get rid of it all because it doesn't serve you now. And then things, here, go ahead. Know, I'm things sorry. that are in the past, let it go. Let it, let it go. go. Let it right, go. Now, Absolutely, you're right. Continue. Releasing I'm breathing all here. All those negative. Okay, but anyway, you could you could do this at home. And here's a very nice little prayer. Okay, I call on the archangels, ascended masters, and light beings to surround me in protective white light. I acknowledge I have been stuck in a karmic cycle. I set the intention to release these old patterns now. Please guide me and help me to see the next steps in my healing. I am ready to do the work. I am willing to see my part in this. Thank you. Amen. So it is. And, and so it is. that it, very, very simple that you're calling in the angels, the ascended masters, mm -hmm. call upon God, any saints. You can put it in Jesus' name, too. And just you in know, Jesus. Jesus. That's is, all you need. Jesus is the epitome. That's all you need. He is the epitome of love, Jesus. Yes, he is. He is the embodiment of love. Okay? I'm glad you he said was the that. one sacrifice for the many. Yes. And that sacrifice in this generation is it, just like not seen. And it's a sin. It is a sin. Come back to God. God forgives you. 
Your angels are here to help you. God loves you. God wouldn't you. have created them if they weren't here to help you. Oh, that's they're the workers. That's right. Of God in order to help us here on this earth to navigate it. Absolutely, absolutely. And to complete your mission. Your mission, I always say it every time, and you've heard me say it a Go thousand ahead. times, is to love others as God loves you and to be of service to your fellow man. And to love yourself as well, God you gotta, loves you. You've got to love yourself before you can do any of that. It's the truth. You know, but you, you really have to love others the way God loves you. I know that some, some people get hung up in all these traits of, of, of today and things that go on and this one and that one. Who said this? And this guy cheated. I, I don't want to hear it no more. I don't want to hear it no more. Get back to love, okay? Get back to love. Get back to serving your fellow man, all right? Victoria did something today, my daughter, that was very nice. She was online to get coffee here at a local coffee shop and get donuts for the kids, okay? And there was a soldier standing behind her. She got a $20 gift card. She turned around and gave it to him. And she That's thanked, beautiful. And she thanked him for his service. That's beautiful. So that's the kind of thing you need to be doing. That's what you do. Recognize Absolutely. those who sacrifice for you. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Amen. Yes. Amen. And amen. Amen to that. Happy Valentine's Day, Happy everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Many, sure, sure. many, 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 many loving blessings to you. Have a beautiful Valentine's Day. The angels love you. Yes, God they do. loves you. Love yourself. That's right. And this day forward yourself. and every day after, be a better you than you were the day before. Embrace God and grace your angels. That's what life is all about. Hear God it, know you. it, learn it, and love it. The end. Many, many, many bright blessings. That's right. Beautiful, bright blessings of love. Should we wave goodbye? Thank you. Bye now. Thank you for watching. See you next month.